What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Dijkstra algorithm, which is essentially just a graph algorithm that allows us to find the shortest path from one node to another node in a weighted graph. So let us get right into it. So let us talk about this algorithm here. And as you can see, we're dealing with a weighted graph and weighted uh, is important here because if it was not weighted, we could just go ahead and use a BFS, a breadth first search, in order to find the shortest path from A to any other node. Because if you don't have any weights, these blue numbers here, uh, finding the shortest path is very simple. You just look at the neighbors, you go one layer further until you get to the node and then you know a bunch of shortest paths, so to say. But since we're dealing with weights here, this is not applicable because the shortest path in a BFS from A to F would just be go to F directly because it's a neighbor. Uh, but as you can see, this has a cost of three here. And if we go uh, first to B and then to F, so A to B to F, we have a cost of one plus one, which is two. So going from A to B and then to F is more efficient than going from A to F directly. So we can say these numbers here are the cost. Um, so A to B has a cost of one. We could also say a distance of one, whatever. Uh, and now we want to find the shortest path from A to any other node. This is what the Dijkstra's algorithm does. We pick a starting node, uh, in this case A, and applying the Dijkstra's algorithm, what we get is the shortest path from A to any other node. We don't have to select a specific target node. It just gives us all the shortest paths from A to B, from A to C, A to D, and so on. Um, and what we need to do in order to apply the Dijkstra's algorithm is we need to set up a table here with one column, which is called step then a column for A, for B, for C, for D, for E, for F, and then two more columns. One is the selection and one is the previous node. Now the Dijkstra's algorithm is not complex, complex at all. It's a very simple, very intuitive algorithm. It's easy to understand. Uh, we just need to fill out this table here in a very simple manner. So we choose a starting point in this case, A, and what we'd write down is with one step, how much distance is there from A to the other nodes? Now we can ignore this column here because A to A is zero or nothing actually. Uh, we cannot say zero because otherwise we would have to select it. Or we could say with zero steps, it's zero, so select it and so on. But essentially what we do is we write down the cost, uh, the cost of going from A to all the other nodes using one step. One step meaning that we can use one edge. So in this case, from A to B, it's one from A to C, it's infinite, because I cannot, I don't have a direct connection between A and C, but I only have one step. So I cannot go ABC, I have to go directly there. And this is not possible. So we're going to say infinite. Um, from A to D, it's the same thing. And from A to E, I have a cost of five. And from A to F, I have a cost of three. Now, the simple thing here that we need to do in the Dijkstra's algorithm is we just select the smallest value. Very trivial, the smallest value that we have here is one. It's the connection from A to B. And then what we do is we just say, okay, we select B and we write down where we got, uh, uh, from, from where we got to B. So in this case, A was the previous node. So we got from A to B uh, and this is the selection. Now the next step is, uh, looking at two steps. So now we're looking at how much does it cost to get to a certain node using two steps. And we're not looking at all the two steps possible. We're not going to see uh, or to check what is the cost from A to E and then to D or from A to E and then to C or from A to F and then to B and so on. We're just going to look one more step from the node that we selected. So we selected B. And now the only thing that we need to do is what can I reach using one more step from B? And then of course we need to add the cost here. So in this case, we could go ahead. B is now that we don't care about B and we don't care about A, we ignore these two. Um, and we now ask, okay, how much does it, uh, how much does it cost to go from B to C? It costs eight. So going from A to C costs one plus eight when we go through B. So we write down uh, nine. So it's one plus eight, it's nine. Um, and then the next thing is going from A to D going from A to D is one plus seven. So we have a cost of eight. Now going from A to E is the same with 
one step as it is with two steps because we have one or plus four or five directly. So it's still five. We don't change anything here. And then going from A to F is a cost of two because now instead of going directly, which costs three, we can go A, B, F, and this has a cost of two. Again, we pick the smallest number, which is F, um, or the smallest cost. And then we say, okay, we selected F, but we selected it from B. We didn't select it from A directly. This is important. Uh, we selected it from B. Then we say three steps. Uh, we ignore B, F, and A. So we only care about C, D, E. And what we do now is we ask, okay, from F going to E takes a cost of uh, two. So two plus two is four, which is less than five. Uh, going from F to C is not really important. Uh, really possible. We cannot just go ahead and find a shorter path to see So what we do is we just apply that nine, it's still the shortest path that we know. And from F to D is also not possible. So we just do it like that. What we do then is we select E again, we select E from F. And then we start the next row. And now we look from E, I can access C using a cost of three which of course is less than nine because four that we already have. So you, you need to think about it this way. This here means that we can go from A to E with a distance of four, with a cost of four. Uh, this is obviously the case if we go that, that, and that. One, one, two. This is a cost of four. And now additionally, I can go from E to C using an additional cost of three. So this is essentially seven and to D, I have to add five. Uh, in order to go from E to D, I have to add five. Four plus five is nine, which is larger than eight. So we don't change that. We, uh, uh, we just copy the eight here. And you can see that the next shortest thing is, or the next smallest number is C. So we select C, but we select C from, um, from E. And then we have five steps. Now we're looking at C from C, I can access D with a cost of three, which is seven plus three is um, 10. So it's less, uh, it's, it's larger than eight. So eight is actually the smallest number, but, and this is now tricky or not tricky, but we need, you need to think about this. We're not accessing, we're selecting D, but we're not accessing D from C because accessing it from C would have a cost of 10. So we need to ask when was the time where I got the cost of eight the first time. So here I got the cost of eight and I got it from B. I could access one and seven, one plus seven. So I actually access D from B. And now we can see the shortest paths in this table here. So let's try to find the shortest path from A to E, for example. If I wanna find the shortest path from A to E, I just go to the column where I selected E and then go back. So I can see, okay, I have to go to F back to F essentially, then to B and then to A. So A, B, F, E is the shortest path. We can, we can see it right here. Um, if I wanna know the shortest path from A to C, I just go C, okay, it's E, F, B, A. So it's A, B, F, E, C. A, B, F, E, C, A, B, F, E, C. This is the shortest path. And now if you wanna have a little bit uh, a better overview, so to say, what we do is we just draw the graph that we can see here. So we can just use these selections and previous um, this data here, essentially, we can use it to graph uh, to, to draw a new graph here, starting at a, we go to B, obviously. And this has a cost of one, from B, we go to F and this has a cost of two. So we add one. Um, then we go from F to E and this has a cost of four. So we add two. Then we go from E to C, which has a cost of seven. So three more. And then we go from B to D, which means that uh, D is actually here. And this has a cost of eight. Um, so this is a seven because up until B, we needed one, and then this is essentially the graph that shows us the shortest path. As you can see, it's similar to the graph above, but all the edges that we're not using to find the shortest paths are just removed. 
and now we have only the, the most efficient edges, so to say. Now, if I want to go to D, I see I have to go to B first and then to D. There's only one path. This is essentially a tree um, and it's the dike, you could say a dijkstra tree or whatever. It's just a graph showing you um, the shortest paths to each node from A. And you can now use this to, you know, find the shortest path, essentially. This is a very simple and a very efficient algorithm to find um, the shortest path from any starting point to any other point in the graph. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Uh, in this video, we learned about the Dijkstra algorithm. In the next video, we're going to learn about the cross call algorithm. And then we're done with graph theory. We're going to talk about data structures then, uh, like linked lists, stacks, and trees, and so on. So that's it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want to give feedback, leave your comment in the comment section down below. Also, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more future videos for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video, and bye.